Hey guys, what's going on? It's Wild Team Natural here doing a new kind of video. Uh, I don't know how long this will go. This will probably be either once every two weeks or once a month. I got a ton of series going on right now, but hopefully we can get this um, get this one started and underway. Um, I love uh, making like top ten lists and doing who could beat who and all this stuff. So for our inaugural or inaugural or whatever however you say it. Um, set of these videos i'm doing the top my top 10 dragon ball z characters favorites of all time and i'll do a little explanation number 10 my number 10 favorite um dragon ball z character is hercule mr satan the one and only world marshals arts champion now mainly i like this guy for his comic relief his personality he plays a very pompous uh bullheaded strong um individual who's also kind of a liar and skeezy but honestly, he is a kind-hearted individual, and he is actually here on more than one occasion. He has helped out the Z Fighters, uh, especially uh, in the Kid Buu fight. He convinced all the people to give Goku their energy so that he could make the Spirit Bond and finally defeat Buu. That, that could not have been done without Hercule, honestly, no doubt. Uh, same thing, he showed his courage in defending uh, Majin Buu and B against the two... Uh, the two what were they called, like, mobsters, uh, in, uh, the Majin Buu saga, when Buu get, or B, the, uh, Majin Buu's puppy gets shot, uh, Hercule ends up just whooping some butt on these fools, and, uh, eventually takes them both out, showing also his good nature. I'd like to also state the fact that Hercule is not in, in any means a weak, uh, character, or in, in, with regards to, uh, other universes. Such as like uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, stuff like that. He he would be probably pretty. He he'd be really tough in those sort of universes. Uh, whereas in the Dragon Ball Z universe, he's pretty much lower lower on the totem pole. But again, when it comes to normal people, he's actually a good fighter. Uh, as as you can tell when he beats uh, Spopovich in the World Martial Arts Tournament, I believe the twenty fourth or twenty fourth, he eventually beats Spopovich. Which again, these dudes aren't these dudes aren't you know aren't no joke. So, uh, Hercule Hercule's a very good character, and a lot of the battles wouldn't have been won in Dragon Ball Z without him. Well, a lot of the later ones. Number nine, number nine is Broly. Broly would be higher on my list, but he uh, he I think Second Coming and Bio Broly kind of ruined him for me. Um, his strength is unparalleled uh during his time obviously the z fighters got stronger throughout the series but he is the legendary super saiyan uh has brute strength and he, he scared vegeta uh in this in this in the movie uh what was it legendary super saiyan broly he scared vegeta enough to just vegeta was paralyzed with fear so that's gotta that's gotta tell you something. That this dude is pretty powerful. Um, also, as a child, the reason why he, if you guys seen the movie, he has a dislike for Kakarot, uh, aka Goku, is because Kakarot uh, would always was a very uh, angry baby and crying baby. They were both born at the same time. Broly was born with an immense power level and was supposed to be basically killed by uh, King Vegeta, uh, but uh, I think Planet Vegeta got destroyed before before. Um, before they could kill him. Uh, so he eventually saves. Somehow in his blind rage. Saves uh, Paragus his father. And uh, himself. And goes to a different planet. Uh, eventually Goku does defeat him though. Along with the other Z fighters. Including Vegeta. Vegeta gets over his fear. But that's that's uh, Broly. My number 9 favorite. Uh, like I said would be higher. But you know. He is what it is. Number 8. My number eight character is Birder. Birder is the fastest in the galaxy, quote unquote, until Goku arrives. Uh, as a child, his mom would hit him whenever he was late. <laughs> so he learned to be the fastest in the universe because he didn't want to get hit, obviously. So he trained himself to be faster. He has a, he has a close bond with uh, all the Ginyu Force members. But Jace would have to be his, you know, his BFF. They have a bunch of moves together, like the Purple Comet Attack. Uh, he, he is also called the Blue Hurricane, and he is the tallest member in the anime. He's the tallest member of the Ginyu Force. Um, 
but uh, I guess in the game they kind of put him at equal playing field with Raccoon. But if you look in the anime, he is taller than Raccoon. Number seven. Number seven is Tapion. Tapion, if you don't know who he is, he's from the Wrath of Dragon movie. Um, he's one of the only few swordsmen in the uh, in the Dragon Ball Z universe that we see. There's Trunks, Tapion, uh, Yamcha is a sword fighter for a little bit there, and there there are a couple more. But he reminds me of uh, he is a legendary hero from Chronots or Chronots. Uh, le there was a legend there that uh, Harutagon, that's his that's his sworn enemy, his people's sworn enemy, uh, was revived, and him and his brother Chronosha or Minosha Chronosha. Minosha used their hero flus to, uh, to immobilize Harutagarn, while another hero cut him in half, and he became known as a legendary hero of Chronos, Chrono, of Chrono, Chrono, Chronots? I don't know how you say it. But, uh, the reason why he reminds me of Link is because he possesses a hero flute, which is like, I'd say, the ocarina, as well as a, um, as well as a, uh, a sword, a sword as well, so he's a sword, he's a sword wielder. Um... Uh, he also forms a close friendship with uh, Kid Trunks in the series. So that's actually pretty cool. Number six. Number six for me is Future Gohan. Not normal Gohan. I believe Future Gohan had the potential to take on, to, to, to eventually probably become stronger than Gohan. Um, if he was given enough time and he wasn't killed. Um, he was the last of the Z Fighters left alive during the Android Saga. This is the, the alternate timeline where uh, Future Trunks came from. To uh, help in the Android and Cell uh, Cell Sagas. Um, honestly, this dude is this dude is hardcore. One of one of my favorite characters. Um, he eventually trains Trunks, and uh, he's more he has a more serious and aggressive side than his uh, uh, main timeline counterpart of the laid kind of kind of sort of laid back uh, adult Gohan, I believe. Um, like I said, he eventually cha trains Trunks, and then he goes to battle against the uh, androids after they try to dis uh, try to destroy a city. Uh, eventually, in trying to save Trunks, he gets his arm blown off. Uh, that's that 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 to me seems a lot more hardcore than I'd say adult Gohan. And he had one sensu bean, and instead of eating it himself and regrowing his arm, he gave it to Trunks to save him from death. Eventually. He decides to train Trunks, and Trunks gets a lot stronger. And uh, Go Future Gohan then decides he's going to go back and attack, and you know, try and defeat the androids once more. He agrees to let Trunks go with him, but then at the last minute, knocks Trunks unconscious. And this is the end of Future Gohan's tale, as he is killed by both androids, leading to the transformation of Future Trunks into Super Saiyan Trunks. Number five. Number five for me is number five and four are interchangeable for me because I b like the characters equally. Uh, this is Vegeta. Vegeta was always Goku's arch rival ever since the Saiyan saga. He, <coughs> he turned from a more evil character into something, I guess, more good. I wouldn't say he's like ultimately good. He has a lot of that Saiyan pride. He was also instrumental in many of the battles. Goku and Krillin wouldn't have survived against the Ginyu Force if Vegeta hadn't stepped in and fought. Uh, uh, fought Gildo and fought uh, Raccoon. Uh, at one point in the uh, Wrath of Gods, no, 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 Wrath of Gods. Uh, what was it? Battle of Gods, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, he is said to be at that point stronger than Goku. When uh, Lord Beerus slaps Bulma in the face, Vegeta just goes nuts, and in that instance, he was said to be stronger than uh, Goku. So that's pretty cool to have and uh he is uh like i said instrumental in the majin buu fight instrumental in the cell uh fight also can go to super saiyan as well so a very cool character number four now we're getting to the top four here actually top little after this top three obviously i said these two are interchangeable i guess you guys could guess who this is goku goku the savior of the universe only to be bested by lord beerus uh, also, his personality is very, he's a very kind individual. Uh, he had a rough childhood. Uh, his, his planet was destroyed. Kind of, his story is kind of similar to that of Superman's. He was sent to Earth uh, to destroy it, and uh, he eventually gets knocked on the head and becomes kind of a normal, good-hearted child. Goku is the epitome of everything that is good in this world. Uh, you know, he, he was. The, the main the main protagonist of of this series uh defeated frieza defeated boo uh helped gohan defeat cell 
uh, and all all sorts of the other Dragon Ball Z movies, this character is he's high he's in high regards in the anime uh, anime universe, and a lot of people know who Goku is. Uh, so very very awe inspiring of a character. Number three. Number three for me would have to be Bardock. Bardock is the father of Goku and Raditz. He had his own special called uh, Bardock the Father of Goku. Now, we're getting to some characters that are very controversial with a lot of people because these are not the most powerful characters. These are these are just my top ten. So with these next three coming up here, I want to let you know that this is, this is these are my all-time favorite characters. They're not the strongest, obviously, but they are my favorite. Uh, father of Goku... Um, in the movie, he defeats him and his uh, team. Uh, I think Torvos, Bar Borgos, or Bargos, and uh, oh, I forget what the girl's name is. But anyway, they attack the planet Kanasa, and the last surviving Kanasan warrior uh, passes along to Bardock his power to see the future and see the end of his uh, race as a whole. So then Bardock goes. Uh, he he gets injured in that fight really bad, so he has to go to a uh, a healing pod. Gets healed, and in the meantime, Frieza enacts his plan to destroy Planet Vegeta, and he eventually kills all of uh, Bardock's team members. So Bardock just goes nuts and attacks Frieza, or tries to attack Frieza. Um, he had a he has a wife also named I think Ginny or Giant <laughs> Ginny. This is also Goku's mother, which is interesting because they show it in the manga, but they don't show it in the movie, or I don't think they mention it in the anime. Um, but uh, she she was a gentle warrior. She was she eventually retires because she wasn't cut out for it. She was too gentle, which we think a lot of people think that that had an influence on Bardock to be kinder and actually remember his son Goku and actually care about his sons uh, Raditz and Goku. Um, it is also said that during this is a little spoiler it, or not a spoiler but a little tidbit. It was also stated that he did tell um, Raditz. When the that the planet was getting destroyed, so he informed him as well. Um, eventually he does have an ending. He start he he calls out Frieza, starts getting attacked by all of Frieza's henchmen, starts whooping some butt on these fools, and then Frieza, Bardock uses his final move, tries to throw it, gets defeated by Frieza as long as the planet Vegeta. But in the end, he did he in his future sight he saw that his son Goku would one day rise up to defeat Frieza. Very cool stuff. Number two. Now, number two is going to be very controversial because the reason why I like this character is not really his strength or how he is in the anime. Uh, Budokai Tenkaichi uh, 3, I believe, is, is where I hit my stride with this character. Supreme Kai, also known as the Eastern Supreme Kai. Uh, he is his counterparts of the Northern, uh, Southern, Western uh, Kais who are all uh, killed by Boo except for the Southern. He's absorbed. Uh, he did, he is the one who destroyed Bibbidi, Bobbidi's father, who is in charge of Majin Buu. Um, he also, in the anime, uses, and the manga, uses the Potara earrings, which if you don't know what those are, that helps you, that permanently fuses you with another, with another person if they put these earrings on. So Supreme Kai accidentally uses them with his, um, with his... Uh, sidekick, I call him Kibito, and becomes Kibito Kai. Um, they they don't know, uh, they haven't really gauged his power level based on he has fought very few times. But he is, but it is stated that he is stronger than Super Namek, uh Piccolo, which is which is which is fairly strong. But compared to a lot of the other Dragon Ball Z characters, not as strong as you would like. Uh, also, he is um, he's it shows that he is probably not as strong because he is scared of characters like Dabura and Yekon. Or Yakon, however you, uh, for which are Bobbidi's henchmen. So he fears them, and he's also scared of Goku and Vegeta as well. So we don't know too much about his power, but it's somewhere in between Super Namek, Piccolo, and uh, Dabura and Yakon. Number one! Number one for me has always been my favorite. Uh, since I was a kid, since I started watching this, he's, he's, just, been, he's just been a great character to me, watching him uh, through the whole series, and that is Piccolo. Piccolo... Is I feel like he is the he, him and Vegeta were on similar paths. They were both villains, but Piccolo decided to change to absolutely transform from a villain into an actual good character and part of the team. It took Vegeta a long time, but he's sort of a more brooding character, and I feel like that's where they split off. Uh, Piccolo uh, is the son of Demon King Piccolo, 
uh, after from Dragon Ball, after Goku defeats uh, Demon King Piccolo, he spits out an egg, which would become his son Piccolo. After Goku's death in the Battle of Raditz with Raditz, uh, Piccolo takes Gohan under his wing. Now this is instrumental to me because I feel like this is his sworn. He Piccolo states this himself in the season one of Dragon Ball Z. He, he, here he is training the son of his enemy to one day probably be stronger than both of them combined. And he doesn't care. He, he trains him anyway. He could have killed Gohan. He could have left Gohan for dead and that would have been the end of it. But he put his pride aside to train for, to, to uh, defeat the Saiyans. And that's something in and of itself. He eventually does sacrifice himself for, Go, uh, for Gohan in, uh, against the battle with Nappa. And uh, his death proves very instrumental in uh, the growth of Gohan as well. Um, so that is my top 10 list of my favorite Dragon Ball Z characters. To recap, 10 was Hercule, 9 Broly, 8 Birder, 7 Tapion, 6 Future Gohan, then 5 is Vegeta, 4 Goku, 3 Bardock, 2 Supreme Kai, and 1 Piccolo. So thank you guys for watching this episode of Top 10. Tell me if you guys want me to do more and tell me what you guys think, you know, what... what what do you want to know what my favorite things are and whatever. And also, if you could leave in your comment your top 10, that'd be awesome. I'd love to hear who your favorite characters are and why. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have the rest of your day.